Welcome to the Virgo Potens YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, then check out the Virgo Potens website at virgopotens.org. Please consider supporting this work by becoming a patron of Virgo Potens on Patreon and by buying my ebooks available on Apple Books. Lastly, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this Virgo Potens YouTube channel. Thank you, and may the Virgin Most Powerful guide and protect you. The Risen Christ Ever With His Church by Tony Capo Bianco. Easter in the year 2020 has been an Easter like no other. It is an Easter that we will not soon forget. The challenging circumstances of this Easter are such that I hope that we are not called to live through their like again. Many Catholics around the world have been separated from our Lord in the most blessed sacrament and from the sacrament of penance. Many of us have been prohibited from assisting at the holy sacrifice of the Mass due to the plague of COVID-19. Being temporarily separated from the sacraments in particular places is something that for most of us had only been read about in church history as well as in events yet to come as prophesied in sacred scripture. Until now, this separation had merely been a subject of mental contemplation. This sorrowful separation may yield good fruit when contemplated along with the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord God is the master of history. Almighty God is in charge. Nothing happens in the church or the world unless the Lord permits it to happen. What might he be telling us by either actively or passively willing the events which surround the COVID-19 pandemic? What significance might there be in the fact that this pestilence and its consequences have been occurring during Lent, Holy Week, and Eastertide? Perhaps the Lord might be permitting the pestilence of COVID-19 and the temporary separation of many Catholics from public worship of God in church and from the sacrament of penance as a chastisement. In a wicked time in which apostasy has spread like a spiritual black plague, Eucharistic abuses have become routine, a Pharisee-like rigorism is on the rise, Tradition has been assaulted and, and an alarmingly high number of Catholics have lost their belief in Christ's presence in the Eucharist. Should it really be surprising that the Lord permitted a pestilence? Should it be surprising that the Lord might permit Catholics to be temporarily separated from the sacraments and the sacred traditions of the Church's public worship of God? God is both perfectly just and perfectly merciful. God's justice and his mercy are two sides of the same coin. We can repent and seek the unfathomable ocean of the Lord's mercy, or we can stubbornly reject his mercy with our hardened hearts and call his wrath upon us. If we foolishly choose to love and serve ourselves rather than the author of life, then we must face the wrath of God's justice. Perhaps the Lord is permitting us to be temporarily separated from the Church's public worship of Him as a just punishment for irreverent masses, sacrilegious holy communions, lack of faith, lack of charity, pharisaical rigorism, and a mistaken notion that we are entitled to receive the sacraments as we please and when we please. It may be that the Lord wants us to wake up from a lukewarm sleep of complacency and an errant sense of entitlement. As consequence of a large-scale assault on tradition, it could well be the case that the Lord is showing us what life would be like without the tradition. It seems that the Lord is showing us who is in control. As a just chastisement, this separation from the Most Holy Eucharist points out to us that we have no inherent right to receive our Eucharistic Lord whenever and in whatever state of soul we please. 
The Holy Eucharist is true heavenly food, and it is love himself feeding us himself. The Eucharist was instituted by Christ on Holy Thursday at the time of the Last Supper during Holy Week. The most holy Eucharist that we receive is the glorified body, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave himself entirely to his Father for our salvation as he spilled every last drop of his most precious blood during his Passion. Salvation wasn't free. Lent, Holy Week, and Eastertide are a time in which Holy Mother Church wisely asks her children to contemplate salvation history. The race of Adam desperately needed a Savior, and many generations yearned for his coming. Perhaps it is because Lent, Holy Week, and Eastertide focus a light on the central truths of the faith that the Lord has permitted this pestilence to occur at this time. Maybe the Lord is calling us to repent and to yearn for and make way for his coming into our hearts. Our salvation had an inconceivably high price. The price paid was the death of the Son of God on the cross. Since Jesus gave himself entirely for our salvation as the ultimate testament of his perfect love, then how can we in good conscience receive him in the most blessed sacrament without giving ourselves entirely to him? Now is the time to remember that Almighty God is the source of the sacraments. Now is the time to recall and reflect upon the fact that the sacraments are greater than any miracle which merely heals a physical illness of the body. Now is the time to realize that although the Lord freely gives us his sacraments through his church, we are not entitled to receive them. This is the time to realize that God doesn't owe us anything, while we literally owe him everything. This is the time to be awestruck by the magnificent awesomeness of the sacraments. This is the time to thank the Lord for all the sacraments that we have already received and to thank him for all of the sacraments that we hope to receive in the time to come. Now is the time to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for his passion, death, and resurrection. Now is the time to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for his love as we ask him to grant us hearts made in the image of the Immaculate Heart of Mary so that we may love him as we ought and in a way pleasing in his sight. The risen Lord is still with us. He will never abandon his church, which is truly his mystical bride. Our blessed Lord told us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is there amongst us. When we pray and meditate the Holy Rosary, we enter into the holy mysteries of the life of Christ and his most blessed mother, as we are at the same time assured of their closeness. Jesus wants us to answer his call to trust in him, even as we are now being stripped of our ordinary means of worshiping him. The risen Christ is our focus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us ask the Virgin Most Powerful to obtain for us an increase of the theological virtue of charity, so that when we are once again permitted to assist in the public worship of the Lord in his church, that we may hunger to receive our Eucharistic Lord with a love that we had never known before. May our hearts burn as a fiery furnace enkindled by the most sacred heart of Jesus. The risen Christ is ever with us.